Welcome to the Incarnate Savior and His Companions, part two of selections from the Gnostic Nag Hammadi Library. The Nag Hammadi Library is a collection of early Christian and Gnostic manuscripts, also called codices, that were discovered in 1945 near the Egyptian town of Nag Hammadi. The writings in these ancient books date back nearly 2,000 years. Their discovery and translation have helped scholars to re-evaluate early Christian history and the nature of Gnosticism, an approach that is emphasized in these texts. Gnostics believe that a divine spark exists within each person through which a direct experience of God can be achieved. Today, the precious Nag Hammadi manuscript collection is housed in the Coptic Museum in Cairo, Egypt. We now invite you to join us to hear excerpts from The Creation of Material Humanity from the Tripartite Tractate in the Nag Hammadi Library. The Incarnate Savior and His Companions he it is who was our Savior in willing compassion, who is that which they were. For it was for their sake that He became manifest in an involuntary suffering. They became flesh and soul, that is, eternally which things hold them, and with corruptible things they die. And as for those who came into being, the Invisible One told them invisibly about Himself. Not only did he take upon himself the death of those whom he thought to save, but he also accepted their smallness to which they had descended when they were born in body and soul. He did so because he had let himself be conceived and born as an infant in body and soul. Among all the others who shared in them and those who fell and received the light, he came into being exalted because he had let himself be conceived without sin, stain, and defilement. He was begotten in life, being in life, because the former and the latter are in passion and changing opinion from the Logos who moved, who established them to be body and soul. He it is who has taken to himself the one who came from those whom we previously mentioned. He came into being from the glorious vision the unchanging thought of the Logos, who returned to himself after his movement from the organization, just as those who came with him took body and soul, and a confirmation and stability and judgment of things they too intended to come. When they thought of the Savior they came, and they came when he knew, they also came more exalted in the emanation according to the flesh than those who had been brought forth from a defect, because in this way they too received their bodily emanation along with the body of the Savior through the revelation and the mingling with Him. These others were those of one substance, and it indeed is the spiritual substance. The organization is different, this is one thing, that is another. Some come forth from passion and division, needing healing. Others are from prayer, so that they heal the sick, when they have been appointed to treat those who have fallen. These are the apostles and the evangelists. They are the disciples of the Savior and teachers who need instruction. Why then did they too? share in the passions in which those who have been brought forth from passion share, if indeed they are bodily productions in accordance with the organization and the Savior who did not share in the passions. The Savior was an image of the unitary one, he who is the totality in bodily form. Therefore, he preserved the form of indivisibility from which comes impassibility. They, however, are images of each thing which became manifest. Therefore, they assume the vision from the pattern, having taken form for the planting which exists beneath the heaven. 
This also is what shares in the evil, which exists in the places which they have reached. For the will held the totality under sin, so that by that will he might have mercy on the totality, and they might be saved, while a single one alone is appointed to give life, and all the rest need salvation. Therefore it was from reasons of this sort that it began to receive grace to give the honors which were proclaimed by Jesus, which were suitable for him to proclaim to the rest, since a seed of the promise of Jesus Christ was set up, whom we have served in his revelation and union. Now the promise possess the instruction and the return to what they are from the first, from which they possess the drop, so as to return to him, which is that which is called the redemption. And it is the release from the captivity and the acceptance of freedom. In its places, the captivity of those who were slaves of ignorance holds sway. The freedom is the knowledge of the truth, which existed before the ignorance was ruling, forever without beginning and without end, being something good and a salvation of things and a release from the servile nature in which they have suffered. Those who have been brought forth in a lowly thought of vanity, that is, a thought which goes to things which are evil through the thought which draws them down to the lust for power, these have received the position which is freedom from the abundance of the grace which looked upon the children. It was, however, a disturbance of the passion and a destruction of those things which he cast off from himself at first, when the Logos separated them from himself, the Logos who was the cause of their being destined for destruction, though he kept them at the end of the organization and allowed them to exist, because even they were useful for the things which were ordained. Go ahead and make war, so that your aura will get darker and darker until it becomes just like in hell. Then you will be ready for it. Brilliant viewers, it's been a pleasure to have you with us today for Words of Wisdom.